Hi, I'm Melissa. And I'm Hannah. And we're going to be sharing with you our project on using inertial measurement units to calculate knee flexion angle. Inertial measurement units, or IMUs, have become increasingly popular devices used for kinematic measurements. One company with an IMU system is Xens. In each IMU, there is a 3D gyroscope, a 3D accelerometer, and a 3D magnetometer, which together give full six degree of freedom tracking of body segments. IMUs are becoming more popular because they are not restricted by the requirement of cameras like other motion tracking systems and allow for kinematic analysis outside of the lab, such as running a marathon, a Parkinsonian patient at home, or possibly scaling a wall. While those are a few large-scale applications of IMUs, we narrowed down our focus to validating knee joint measurements with the XNs IMUs, with our research question being, can we use IMU sensor orientation data in OpenSim to reconstruct knee joint kinematics? Let's take a walk through the pipeline to see how we go from IMU sensor space in the real world to model simulation space. The IMU sensor collects raw data in the form of triaxial linear accelerations, triaxial angular velocities, and triaxial magnetometer readings. This data tells you how the sensor is moving and what orientation it is in at each time step. Next, this raw data is processed with a sensor fusion algorithm, and we use XSEN's proprietary extended Kalman filter, or XKF3. This algorithm calculates the orientation and position for the sensor using the measurement of gravity by the accelerometers and Earth's magnetic north measured by the magnetometers to compensate for otherwise slowly but unlimited increasing drift errors from the integration of angular velocity from the gyroscopes. This orientation data is then fed into a biomechanical model to move the model's body segments and from this we can calculate joint angles such as knee angle. In this project, we input sensor orientations from the XSENS processing in an OpenSim inverse kinematics script, or IK, that output model kinematics, specifically knee flexion angle, and we use the gate 10 degree of freedom 18 muscle OpenSim model developed by Seth, Thelen, Anderson, and Dell. As Hannah mentioned, the first step in this process is to set up the IMU sensors for data collection. To measure knee angle, we attached one IMU sensor to the thigh and one to the shank as instructed by XSENS. In addition to the IMU setup, we attached a goniometer to the outside of the leg such that the center of rotation aligns with the knee joint. We placed markers along the goniometer to define thigh and shank segments combined with a high-speed camera to obtain a ground truth knee angle for motion tracking. Each recording started with the knee at full extension defined as zero degrees. The knee then bent to 90 degrees flexion and back up. This motion was repeated at three speeds, 40 beats per minute to simulate walking, 120 beats per minute to simulate running, and in between at 80 beats per minute. We took advantage of the XN's extended Kalman filter and processing step here, and got sensor orientations in the form of quaternions, which we then translated to rotation matrices with a simple MATLAB script. One important thing to note about going from IMU sensor orientation in the real world to model space is that you have to have an initial calibration step. This relates the rotation sequence or orientation in the real world to the rotation sequence in the model's world by some transformation t. You can then use this transformation to propagate your model forward based on the IMU data you collect. The next step in this process is to input the orientation and position data into the biomechanical models. In the XSENS pipeline, an unspecified biomechanical model is used, but we were able to find that they use a soft hinge joint to model the knee, meaning that the main axis of rotation is flexion and extension, whereas internal rotation and abduction are limited to a few degrees and thus modeled as statistically more unlikely. The OpenSim knee model is a single degree of freedom model with motion in the sagittal plane. There are femoral, tibial, and patellar transformations, but only as a function of knee angle. So now let's take a look at our knee angle calculations for the different methods we used and compare. On the right, you'll see the motion we got from our OpenSim model inverse kinematics method. On the left is a graph of our results. And notice that the XN's joint estimation shown in orange is closer to the ground truth video marker data shown in yellow than our OpenSim model inverse kinematics method shown in blue. We suspect that XN's has a more accurate joint angle estimation because in addition to the prediction step, where they integrate acceleration and angular velocities, they employ a correction step. 
This correction step includes updates based on biomechanical characteristics of the human model, notably joints, and detects contact points of the model with the external world, which constrains the global position and velocity. Estimated kinematics are then fed back to the sensor fusion algorithms and segment kinematic step to be used in the next time frame. This allows for a smoother, more accurate prediction of the subject's kinematics. We thought the IMU joint angle estimation might worsen with higher velocity motions. However, looking at our results for the various speeds did not lead us to conclude this was true. Perhaps this is because we did not sustain the high speed activity for long enough time periods. If you're interested, you can learn more about this on our Confluence page. Most of the challenges we faced were with the limited documentation of the XNs model and the formatting of the exported data. Additionally, we started with the use of Euler angles to describe the rotations, but were faced with kinematic singularities and had to switch to quaternions and rotation matrices instead. In order to use the XN's biomechanical model, you must go through the entire 17 sensor full body suit calibration. This leads us to our first point in future work, having simple or an informal neutral stance calibration of the sensors. Real-time integration with the OpenSim model could improve our OpenSim results and allow for open access understanding of the used biomechanical model. Upon validation of the sensors, they can be used to collect real-world kinematic data and answer many questions that research in the lab alone is not able to answer. Thank you to our 45 teaching team and classmates, as well as the Neuromuscular Biomechanics Lab and the Mobilize Center for all of your support throughout this process. We are looking forward to future IMU applications. Thanks! Thanks.